Good evening everyone. Today I have a very special video that was suggested by a friend and since we're in the middle of painting I'm in a spare bedroom. That's what's all that behind me. We're trying to get ready for the big painting that's going to go on in my house. So we didn't want to let anybody down and still get out some really cool videos. And this was suggested by Whisper Latina ASMR. Whisper Latina ASMR suggested, hey, I'd like to learn more about the history of rune stones and what each individual stone means and more information about them. So that's what this video is about. And I'm going to use my handy dandy pointer to point out everything about rune stones. So let's get started. Okay. I've got my notes right here and we're recording some information about rune stones and how they all work. Now as you can see there are 25, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 5 times 5 equals 25. So in my set there are 25 rune stones. Now, each rune stone has a different marking on it. Now, in the past, language, written language, evolved from symbols and glyphs, hieroglyphs and cartouches. This stone at the very end is very special, and we're going to take a quick look at it. It is the Odin stone. There is nothing on either side of it. It is a blank stone. It's the mystery stone. Now it's last, but we're going to talk about it first. When it comes to reading and divinations and fortune telling, this is the magic stone. When it comes up, anything is possible. So the interpreter can decide what the value of this stone is. So that's why we talked about it first. Rune stones, sometimes cards, are used as tools of divination, a way to predict one's future. Rune stones come in a set of 24 ancient alphabetic symbols. Now we have 24 plus the, rune, the Odin stone. They can be made of different materials, wood or glass, most common and attractive and usually kept in a pouch or box. They usually come with a book of instructions defining the symbols. Ideally, ruins are cast on an east-west axis or facing the sun. A white cloth is laid down and used to determine the direction of the casting. Now, since I'm not a true diviner and we're doing this for entertainment purposes, I use a green cloth and I don't always cast with my right or left hand in any specific direction. From here the focus should lie with the pressing question. After casting the stones onto the cloth, the ones which have fallen the right side up are red and depending upon whether the runes is reversed or not will have a bearing upon its meaning and the reading as a whole. An alternative to casting the rune stones, which I do castings, is you pick a stone randomly for a day reading. You can also do what is known as a three rune spread. Some feel that the day rune is a good way to get an answer to a single question. The three rune spread is used for asking much broader questions, whereas the single rune can be drawn on a daily basis. So you can just do like a one single one. Now, I'm getting all this information from a website and I will put the link below for everyone. Let's go over the meaning now of all the individual stones. This one is cattle. And cattle is about wealth and success in your life. So this is cattle. The reverse of that is abandonment of plans and loss. This next one is urus. Uruz is brute strength, health, 
masculine archetype. That's this stone right here. Okay. The re reverse of this is missed abilities, weak willpower, and lack of motivation. Now, reverse means if you flip the stone over and read it backwards. Okay. The next one is Thurazaz. Thurazaz is the seeing of the future. Opening the gate to the future. Luck, reflection of action, protection. You will see the truth. Now, the reverse of that would be not willing to heed information given, having a stubborn mindset. So, there you go. Our next stone is Anzus. Anzus is referencing the ancestral god Odin, who was like the All-Father, the head god of all of Asgard. You may know more about him from the Thor movies than you do from your history classes, but that represents Odin. The reverse of that is Loki. Look out for trickery, the dark side of yourself, when others interfere with your plans or there is failed communication. So that's a very important stone. The next stone is Raidho, which is journey. It's about traveling in either the physical world or your soul traveling to heal something that needs healed in your life. So that's that stone. Okay. The reverse of that is an unexpected, unpleasant journey, like having to go to a funeral or a wedding you're not excited about going to. This next stone is called Kinas. Kinas is the beacon or the torch, the light of the world. When you feel dark, this rune will bring an opening to help you see the light around you and all the possibilities your actions can take. So that's what that stone represents. The reverse of it is withdrawal, anxiety, closing, and loss, just shutting out the light and sitting in darkness, which is never healthy for anyone. Okay. The next stone is Gebo. Gebo is the gift of harmonic relationships, unity with yourself and others. It cannot be reversed. There is no reverse to the unity of the tribalness of being with people. Our next stone is Wunjo. Wunjo or V, W or V, which represents bliss or glory. You do not need anyone. You have peace, self-worth, joy, serenity. This is about you, your personal harmony with the universe. And the reverse of it is sorrow, dissatisfaction, disappointment, friction, delay, possession of higher forces. So that's what that stone is. Okay. okay. Our next stone is Hagalaz. Hagalaz is destructive forces. This refers to the destructive forces in nature and things out of our control and it cannot be reversed. It's something that just happens because of the nature of the world we live in. This stone is Mauzeth. Mauzeth is the negative of human needs. Caution, hold, coming in touch with a side of you that you may not like. Resistance, distress, delay, constraint, or restraint. Reflect on how bad things can and appreciate what you have. And the reverse of this is improper course of action. Think twice before you act and don't make hasty judgments. That's very interesting. Our next stone is ice. 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 Frozen in time. Calm. Non-action. Everything on hold. Letting go of ego and seeking your inner truths. You are blocked by your emotions and this cannot be a reverse stone. You have to read it just like it is. So when you're frozen by an action or action, keeps you from going forward. Okay. Our next stone is Jira, which is the cycle of one year. Reaping of a reward. Let's see. 
when your world becomes stagnant. Harvest the seeds that you have planted so it cannot be reversed. Our next stone is Iwas, which is the yew tree, stability, doing the right things, patience, reverence, perseverance, endurance, decide what is right to get things accomplished in your life and just do it. This cannot be reversed. Okay. Our next stone is Perthal. Perthro is Perth, which is associated with the bird, the phoenix. Rebirth. Coming back to life after a stalled event in your life, a death in the family, a loss of a loved one. This is about rebirth. Okay. Our next stone is Alges. Alges is spirit guides. Protection fortunate new influence, making connection with spirits, and working through your issues. This is about those little voices in your head that keep you going. Your conscious, a uh, helpful um, guardian angel, those type of things. That's what this represents. Okay, our next stone is Solo. Solo is the sun. Soul. The circle of completion. Wholeness, the sun the path of awareness and self-knowledge. This cannot be reversed. The sun can never be destroyed or set, set forever. And the sun rises and sets on the good and evil alike. The sun stone. Okay, our next one is Tyr, the sky god. To be successful in competition, very motivated, Finding the spiritual or transcendental self. The reverse of this is low energy and lack of enthusiasm. So that's Tear, the Sky God. Our next one is Birkana. Birkana, birch tree, the goddess. To be prepared, cautious in what you do, also references your home and family. Putting down the roots of a tree in life. Our next stone is Iwas, the sacred horse. Iwas, the sacred horse, the balance of things in the universe, stability, move forward carefully, focusing on the tools that will help you get there. The reverse of this is sudden, unexpected change that is not wanted. That one. Okay, our next one is Manas. Mana is the nature of humanity, the self in its place in the collective consciousness of humanity. We are all part of the collective unconsciousness. We are all one. Your attitude towards and their attitudes towards you take this time for personal reflection. Cannot be reversed. Read it as it comes at you. Okay, our next stone is Laguz, water, emotions, the moon, the moonstone, the moon, the flow of emotions in all things into the collective unconsciousness, all bodies of water, Aquarius, the feminine energies, high mind, spirituality, health and healing, a time of cleansing. The reverse of this is not listening to your inner voice, tackling something you know you should not do or do not have the capability to complete. So this is reversible. Okay. Our next stone is Ingwa's. Ingwa's fertility. The joining of human beings usually for a true birth, a pregnancy, 
Finish what you are doing. Tie up loose ends and start something new, and it cannot be reversed. This is a fertility for crops, for your livestock, and for your family. Okay. The next one is Dagas. Daylight or dawn. A new day begins and you go to work. You become more significant, more insightful, breaking through your new ideas. Light is around you. This cannot be reversed. Okay. Our next stone is Othala. Ancestral property and inheritance. Freedom and independence through releasing ideas and things that keep you stuck. You will feel free. You will inherit from someone. The reverse of this is not letting go of old hard feelings, outmoded ideas and concepts. You will feel stuck. And of course the last stone is our sometimes called the Odin's Rule. The blank ruin. Anything is possible and can happen. The sum total of who you are, what you have done, what you have become. Choose a direction and go for it. The blank rune was added to the others in the 1980s. It shows that as humanity has grown, the possibilities are beyond what was conceived of originally. There is also some evidence, in addition to being a writing system, runes historically serve purposes or were used as magic. This is the case from earliest evidence of the Roman and Germanic Iron Age with non-monastic inscriptions and the uh, written word in stone with these stones, you know, the symbols in the stones. They seem to have appeared in verses in runes, including their magic applications. In medieval sources, notably the poet Ida, they mention victory runes to be carved on a sword. Some of the grasps and some of the in inlaves and the name Tyr twice, Tyr the sky god. In early and more modern times related, folklore and superstition is recorded in the form of the Icelandic magical staves that had the runes written right on the long body of a staff. Runes have been used in Nazi symbolism by the National Socialists and the neo-Nazi groups that associate themselves with Germanic traditions, mainly the Tyr and Odin, Odal, see Odalism, in Alge's runes. Author Guido von Liszt, one of the most important figures in Germanic mysticism and runic revivalization in the er late 19th and early 20th centuries. In 1908, Liszt published The Secret of the Runes, a set of 18 so-called Armenian runes based on the younger Futhark, which were allegedly revealed to him in a state of temporary blindness after a cataract operation on both eyes in 1902. In Nazi context, the S rune is referred to as Sieg, after list probably from the Anglo-Saxon Siegel. The wolf's angel, while not a rune historically, has the shape of List's Gibor rune Modern systems of runic divination, like this set right here, are based on hermeticism, classical occultism, and the I Ching. Okay? So the symbols that we use today were used for nefarious reasons, but the runes that I use today are based on a different system. Okay? And we will go through them and count
our modern set. I appreciate all of you stopping by today and learning more about this art of runestone divination. Thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. It was a lot of fun to make. I personally enjoyed it. Runestones are something you can do for fun, and they're definitely not real. It is all up to the individual reading them to interpret the meaning of each stone as it applies to the individual. So don't take too much of this to heart, but it is a fun parlor game that you can do to entertain your friends. If you're interested in learning more about runestones, I'll put the links below to the website that I got my information from. If you'd like to buy a set, my friend Raven does make them, and uh, her Etsy account is below. So, and once again, this was a kind of a veiled shout out to Whisper Latino ASMR. She's a wonderful new artist. If you like ASMR videos, please go and check out the links below to her channel. Have a nice day. Uh, it's really rainy here and gloomy, so a good day for sleeping weather. <laughs> so I'm going to put on a nice relaxing sleep video and get some shut eye. Until I see you again, have a most blessed day. Bye-bye.